just step back a minute um, in terms of this, this idea of the meaning of life. So you were saying that actually a Christian worldview expands the possibility for meaning, not only in this life, but also beyond. Um, which it leads into another question that people ask, which um, gets at the heart of this question of meaning. Uh, so demographers tell us that human life expectancy is at an all-time high on this planet at around uh, you know, 80 years. You said 70, I think. Oh, you're They're giving saying, me um, 10. Thank you. <laughs> around 80 years in the United States, at least. Um, and it's slightly higher in the UK. I'm not sure why that's the case. Perhaps you can address that in your response. But living longer doesn't actually solve the basic problems that have haunted, or the basic questions that have haunted human beings from the beginning of time. It actually maybe uh, exacerbates them because you have longer to think about these questions. Uh, questions like, why are we here? What is our purpose? And I'm curious what your response is to some of these questions. Uh, you've addressed a little bit, but if you could flesh some of that out, it would be helpful. I wonder if my children put that question to me. Why am I here, Daddy? And I've often wondered, what would I say to them? Well, I know because I've had the question and I have answered it. Do you know what I told them? Because I wanted you to be. And one of the biggest things for me is this. If you ask that question as bluntly as that, why are you here? I can't get behind this that God wanted me to be. Now, somebody wanting you is a wonderful thing in life. C.S. Lewis wrote a brilliant article called The Inner Ring. And we all feel this. We come across a ring of people and we're in the outside. And we feel unwanted. And all of us have had this experience. It's a terrible experience. Kids have it, grown-ups have it, and so on. And when you come to the raw question of existence. And I, I've asked myself this question so many times until I came across this magnificent statement. It's in the book of Revelation, which is at the end of the Bible, and it's full of the most magnificent descriptions of beauty and sound and music and vibrant with life. And at one point, the whole universe is praising God as creator. And it goes like this. We praise you our God because of your will they were and were created put that into contemporary English it's saying this that ultimately I exist because God the God of the universe wanted me to be and that gives me infinite significance and I see all of purpose at all the other levels flowing from that now that might not be the kind of answer you were thinking of, but it seems to me you can't, you can't get behind that, you see. Why would God want me to be? Well, if you look at me, you'd wonder, wouldn't you? I mean... I wasn't going to say anything. I say, yes, of course you weren't, but it is true. And it's so, it's so encouraging. Look at me, I'm not perfect. I have all kinds of hang-ups and so on. What a terrific relief it is to discover that there's someone in the universe that wanted you to exist and accept you as you are. If you find a friend like that at Brown University, you've found a friend for life. Someone who accepts you as you are. I believe that occurs at a higher level. It's only the start of the Christian faith. It's not the end. But to my mind, it's one of the most significantly meaningful things that I've got. I'd rather have that than anything else. All the degrees I've got and all that kind of stuff. I'd much rather have that. That friendship at the highest level of a friend that actually wants me to exist. Of course, that raises a lot of questions. <laughs> so you're saying you disagree with Calvin in the Calvin and Hobbes uh, comic strip at the beginning there, that uh, Calvin says, I am here so everyone can do what I want. Um, this, this notion of contemporary selfishness uh, is not the point, right? The purpose, as you're saying, is beyond yourself, beyond your own even intellect and experience in terms of God desiring you to be here for a specific purpose, but what is that purpose? I well, think that's it, the core of the question. Well, it, it relates to the survey as well, where people were asked uh, objective, subjective, and so on. And, of course, logically, Calvin Hobbes' uh, view is possible. Uh, it's a fairly desperate one, and it leads to an enormous lot of narcissism and self-destruction uh, 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 and everything else. But 
again, what is the purpose? Well, I don't think there is one purpose. Uh, the great catechisms of the church, you know, man's chief end is to glorify God. But then you say, well, what on earth do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that part of the purpose for me is doing abstract pure mathematics. Now, you may find that the most boring, unhappy kind of concept you ever came across in your life, which just shows <coughs> we're different. But it seems to me that we get some clues. Let, 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 let me step back from this a little bit. If we want to ask ourselves, what is the purpose for humanity? Then one of the books, the great books of literature that has influenced me more than any other is the book of Genesis that, with which the Bible starts. Because it fascinatingly gives us a very compressed but extremely profound language, ideas about what human beings are and therefore what their purpose is. And let me go through it very quickly, if I may. It starts with the notion that human beings are made of the dust of the ground. That is, there's so much chemistry and physics. Now, a reductionist atheist will tell you that's all you are. You're just chemistry and physics, little elementary particles fuzzing around, and that's it. That's what Francis Crick believes. Oh, no. The Bible says more. What it says is now that... Um, we are animate, we're alive, well, we know that. Next level up, a little phrase that you might miss unless you're interested like me in literature, because literature and indeed history are immensely important disciplines. God made the trees good to look upon and good for food. How very interesting. Human beings are so much chemistry and physics, they're alive, they've got an aesthetic sense. Now you begin to see where we can flourish. The satisfaction of our aesthetic sense. Some of you are artists, some of you are musicians. I like to think of myself as a little bit of an artist in doing pure mathematics. There's another little hint. Then we discover that God um, puts human beings into a garden. And the idea of taming the world, because a garden is different from a desert, as you know, although if you look at my garden in Oxford, you wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> but the idea of a garden is imposing a discipline on our environment, and letting plants grow. That gives enormous satisfaction and a sense of purpose. But there's more. We're told that rivers went out of that garden, and if you followed them along, you would discover there's gold and there's various precious stones. What's that talking about? Curiosity, ladies and gentlemen. When you see, when I do, a railway line, where does it go? A river, where does it go? Follow it along and you will discover things. As if God, at the very beginning of this magnificent book, is beginning to tell us what it means to be human in the sense of finding fulfillment and meaning. Follow the rivers. That's what you're doing in Brian. Some of you are following the physics river. Some of you are following the history river. Some literature, some languages. But you're following the river and exploring. And then you're doing something else. God started science, you know. That's why I'm a passionate scientist. God isn't anti-science. Not only is he not anti-intellectual, he's not anti-science, because, do you remember one of the first things God told humans to do? I know it's a simple story and some people trivialize it, but just take it seriously for a minute. God told human beings to name the animals. That's taxonomy. Every intellectual discipline involves names and things. You could come out with technical terms in history, couldn't you, that I wouldn't know about. And I could certainly come across, come out with some technical terms in maths that you wouldn't have a clue about, I suspect. That's what I'm afraid of, yes. Yes, well, don't worry, I'm not going to do it. But we're all like that. We're naming things. There is immense satisfaction to be got in naming things. That's what science, that's what literature, that's what the humanities are all about. Do you see what's happening here? Instead of the Bible closing down and turning the world into a gloom, it's opening up the possibilities. So what have we got? An aesthetic sense. We've got the discipline of a garden and causing things to grow and plant life and nourishment and all that that means. We've got the aesthetic sense. We've got science and taxonomy. Is there anything else? Yes, there's work. Work in the garden. That's part of what it means to be human. And the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, it's not, it's very ironic to me 
There, at every one of these points, there's a philosophy in the world that cuts life off at that point and doesn't go further. Life is just physics and chemistry, that's materialism. Or, life is just the pursuit of aesthetics, that's hedonism. Or, life is just work, that's the old Marxist view. Or, life is just... And here's the interesting thing, the Bible tells you more about life than any of these philosophies, which is one of the reasons why I believe it. And you creep up a bit further. It's not good for man to be alone. There's a relationship with someone, yet someone who's other, and it's building up to the fact that the highest definition of life is a relationship of God, which is morally defined. And there's another big wealth of meaning coming in because we human beings made in the image of God are moral beings. We've got a knowledge of right and wrong. We can say yes or no. And of course, that capacity is the capacity that is at the back of the fact that we're capable of loving one another. So sorry to go on about that. But it seems to me to be important because we've got such a wealth of pressure from the other side saying that anything with God in it cuts you down. In fact, it does the exact opposite. 